I'm gonna be taking a picture of something special for my backyard tonight. I'm gonna be taking a picture of a nebula for my backyard, but not just any type of nebula. This is a very special nebula with something very hidden inside of it. I guess not really hidden, but just has a lot of abundance in this special thing in space. If you're new to the channel, welcome to Astro Tan. My name is Tanner, and I will be taking you through this journey tonight of photographing the Lion Nebula through my camera and telescope setup. So let's get into it. guys long time no see how are you guys doing I have been super busy over these past couple weeks and I haven't been able to film but today is a very special day it is Friday and I am finally able to film for this new YouTube video oh did I forget to mention that I'll be revealing this image at the end of this video yeah it'd be good to keep that in my previous video I was talking about how we're in like mid-september and now we're like already in October and I told you guys before many times, I'm super excited for this. And it's finally fall, I'm, yes! So I guess I'll tell you guys what I've been doing over these past couple weeks. Crazily enough, I haven't even been really taking any astrophotography pictures. I mean, I've done some on the side, just little small pictures that I haven't really shared, but nothing really serious. And I'm, I'm gonna keep those pictures away on the side. I don't think I need to share those because they were just little small projects just to see what I want to do. In all actuality, I've been very busy with school and a lot of outside school related sports. And a few days ago, I got a cold and I'm still getting over it, but I really was determined to film because even next week and this weekend, I don't have any opportunities to film. I can't image tomorrow, even though it's a clear night. And it's crazy, I work, I have a job, so it's like, all over the place but it is a Friday night it is perfect for filming out here and we're just gonna get the job done tonight get some amazing photons on the lion nebula you know even though I said that I was excited for temperatures to go down and that they have been going down in the last video they really haven't it's really been hot still but it's 80 degrees right now and it was really hot earlier today it was about 82 to 84 degrees and it's like come on I need this weather to be nice and cold but over the past few weeks I've been noticing early in the morning when I've had to wake up that all the fall and winter constellations are almost in full force they're taking over the night sky and the summer ones are going away and I really am glad that Cygnus is going away because I've been all crazy over that for the entire year and you guys know that as well you had to deal with it for probably the most of my YouTube videos so don't worry about it till next year. But we are back at it and ready to go tonight, guys. So let's talk a little bit about the Lion Nebula. And let me tell you why it's a little bit special. So when I was looking at targets to photograph this fall, I was looking on an app called Sky Guide, which is where I normally find a lot of my astrophotography targets that I like to take pictures of. So I was scrolling through Sky Guide, just taking a look at the night sky, when things are rising, when things are setting, and finding those really optimal times for taking pictures of things, preferably all night because I have an unobstructed view of the sky. So as I was scrolling through Sky Guide, I saw something in particular that caught my eye. And I didn't know what it was called at first, but I noticed that it had a weird structure unlike a lot of nebulae that I've seen before. And this is a really strong O3 signal that is actually more prominent than the HA signal, which is kind of strange. You don't see that a lot in nebulae. I've talked about how there are HA and O3. Those are really the main two gases that you'll see in space, preferably hydrogen alpha, which is HA. And O3 is a little nice touch that adds a lot of clarity and a lot of color to your image. O3 is a little bit more tricky to take a picture of because it kind of spreads out in a lot more different wavelengths of light than HA does. Yes, even though we do have filters to block out light pollution and moonlight, like the filter I'll be using tonight, the Optolong L Enhance, O3 is still just a little bit more tricky, and it will be a little bit sensitive to that moonlight and a lot of that light pollution that you will see coming through your image, even though we have filters for it. Because O3 kind of blends in with the sky itself, it is still a little bit hard to actually isolate a lot of those nebula details from space itself. HA, on the other hand, is red and it has a very specific color 
in space, and it's not really any color that could be mixed in with the sky itself. So it is much easier to separate that wavelength of light in comparison to O3, which kind of takes a little bit more of skill to really bring out in terms of processing your image to, to reveal a lot of that detail. So the easiest way to get a really strong O3 signal is not really to use filters at all. The whole trick is to get under some dark skies and under a new moon. Then that means that the moon is completely not illuminated by the sun at its current phase. So that means that the moon has 0% illumination, which ultimately means that there is no moonlight that is going to shine on our nebula details or on our imaging sequence itself. So if you guys guessed it, that is exactly what I'm doing tonight. I will be shooting under a new moon, and this is the best time to shoot targets like this. When you use no filter, there's not really any isolation for the nebulae, so ultimately the nebula will not really appear in a really contrasty kind of view as if you were using a filter. It will kind of be blended in with the background sky and a filter is what's really important to isolate a lot of those background sky and the nebula itself. You guys might have noticed the shirt that I'm wearing and this is from the Cherry Springs Star Party earlier this year. I didn't really talk about it but I've been thinking about it a lot recently and I really want to go back. The Cherry Springs Star Party was basically a meetup of hundreds of astronomers and astrophotographers just like myself who all come together and enjoy the night sky for a couple nights under some pristine dark skies. I met a ton of great people and I met someone in particular that was a huge inspiration for me and this channel, Astro Backyard. And it was super crazy actually meeting him. I was freaking out. And I was so lucky enough to get a picture with him and talk with him for a long time. So if you're watching these videos, Astro Backyard, I care about you a lot and you are a huge inspiration for me and a lot of others. You could really do this hobby alone and never really meet anybody but I strongly advise that you do talk with a lot of other people, meet new people, and actually go to these star parties itself. When you get to see everyone's different setups and you learn a lot of tips in one night from a whole bunch of people who've come up with these genius ideas for a lot of issues that you might have. And when you really get to share the night sky with so many people all at once, it creates a big, strong connection in my heart and with a lot of people there too. You know, I don't think any hobby does it like this one does in terms of bringing people together under the night sky. The gear I'll be using tonight to create this image of the Lion Nebula is right behind me. Starting with the camera, the trusty old Player One Artemis C Pro, and I've been using this camera since June. It is a great camera. I do not plan on selling it anytime soon, so it's going to get some great pictures, great exposures tonight of the Lion Nebula. Following the setup on top, I have the SV Boney SP503, and it is a astrophotography made telescope that gets some great images of space. And I did a video on it recently, so you should check that one out. I have the Optolong L Enhance inside of my telescope right now, which is that light pollution filter, that narrowband filter that will isolate the HN03, my primary nebulae that I want to isolate from the night sky tonight. Then I have my ZWO ASI 120MC guide camera which is what I'll be using to get some precise accuracy in my tracking mount, the IOPTRON GEM28 Equatorial Tracking Mount. This is all going to be controlled from my laptop and I will be able to see my images come in in real time. Alright you guys, we are finally imaging the Lion Nebula from my backyard with my camera and telescope set up. I am currently waiting for the first exposure to come in and I don't really know what to expect if I'm going to be honest. 
I know this target is a little bit faint, but I didn't know that it was really that faint. And it is actually quite a challenging target itself, but we're going to see what we can get tonight. And we're probably going to spend a couple more nights on this, just like I do with every other target, just to get a really good exposure time and a really good signal-to-noise ratio. It is super, super calm out here. There's not even the slightest gust of wind, and those are the nights that are really meaningful and really have an impact on your imaging sequence. If there's a lot of wind, sometimes it will affect your tracking accuracy as a lot of that wind can really actually move your mount ever so slightly to cause a little bit of some issues when your mount is tracking and taking these long exposures. But luckily, we've had a very lucky time of night when we don't really have a lot of wind gusts at all. I can't really remember the last time we had a lot of wind except for in the winter, so everything is going to be running smoothly tonight, I'm hoping. The plan is to get 115 5 minute exposures tonight, which is going to equal around 9.5 hours of exposure time on this target alone. With a lot of these longer nights, it is much easier to get a lot of exposure time in one night, especially with my unobstructed view, so that so those two factors working together really make a big impact. So we are nearing the end of the video now, and the first exposure is about to roll in. I'm super excited for this, and I can't wait to show you guys my image of the lion nebula that I was able to grab over these past couple nights. I'm going to target around 20 hours of exposure on this one. So without further ado guys, it's time for the image reveal. Clear skies, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out. Ugh, bro, I'm still getting over this cold. <coughs> yeah, it's really not enjoyable. Why am I even re why am I even recording right now? I'm not even gonna put this in the video, but you know, we like to talk to ourselves a lot. Yeah. It's a weird thing. But uh yeah, hopefully uh whoever's listening to this we're gonna get over this cold sooner or later. <laughs>